So with each of the HTC RAS 6, 7 beta releases, we've been including more and more capabilities and documentation for bridge scour and how to use RAS 2D for bridge scour analysis. And with this final you know, 6, 7 re beta release before we release the full version, we're pushing some of those tools out there so people can play with them for the first time to get some feedback on them. And also just to kind of get a sense of where this is going, uh, we will kind of deprecate this video and replace it with a full feature video with the 6.7 release. But people are really interested in how to do this and where this is going. And we do actually have enough output that you could do a full HEC 18 analysis with HC RAS 2D data. Plus we have a lot of documentation. So we thought we'd push something out now and, and then push something out that's more complete when we do the full release. And so the first thing we kind of want to draw your attention to is we've done a lot of documentation just on how to use some of this new output to actually do an HEC 18 bridge scour analysis. And so if you go to the HEC RAS docs, which should just be bookmarked, uh, if you're a RAS user and don't have RAS docs bookmarked, please do. Um, but you can just go to help and go to any one of these manuals. If you go to the user manual here. It'll pop up and this is just the RAS users manual, but if you go to RAS docs, that'll take you to all of our help and documentation. Uh, but the ones that you should really know about are the training and the uh, tutorial and guides down here. Training, that's how you get to all of our classes, um, including some of our video content. But the tutorials and guides will walk you through some particular skills and applications. And so under tutorials and under 2D sediment transport, we have this using 2D RAS results for bridge scour analysis. And in here, we're going in and we're basically breaking down the analysis step by step to take you through one of these studies. And so there'll be more videos on each of these component steps, but we're just gonna kind of show you an overview of the tool and how to use it here. And so this is the main like idealized example data set that I'm posting with these tools. And what we've done here is we have a bridge contraction. If I turn off the velocity, you can see this is kind of an idealized model, but we do have demos with non-idealized models coming out. But for now, this will orient you and and these orange lines, it looks like there's three of them, but if you zoom in, there's actually nine of them because each of these has a channel and two overbanks. Uh, and we go into detail in the documentation and other videos and how to lay these out. These are reference lines. And what these will do is these will pull the data you need for a bridge scour analysis using the Federal Highway Administration's hydraulic design toolbox. And so before we even get to using the automated tool, what we've done is if you go in here under results and say show results table, you will get a results table that just happens to have everything you need in it for a bridge scour analysis. You've got the velocities, you've got the hydraulic depth, which is the average depth that we're going to use for the bridge scour analysis. Um, and then the max depths, which are what we're going to use for the upstream peer face and just all the things that you'll need for that editor. But what we wanted to show with this video is how to use the automated tool. And so again, if you go into the result, you right click and you just go down here to show bridge scour tool, which is in beta and select that, you'll get this tool, this interface. And so the first thing that the interface does is it imports the cross section and all of the bridge geometry data associated with your bridge. So if we turn on a result and we come in here and we can you know, plot our bridge deck, this is also evolving very rapidly, the bridge output and mapper in six, the 6.7 betas. But if we choose that, that will launch our new integrated bridge uh, visualization tool. You can, from here, you can actually turn on the internal rating curves and you can look at where your bridge actually plots on those. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this, but this show also shows you the geometry that you have associated with your bridge. It's that geometry, which again, we can also see by going to the geometry data and the SA2D connection. And so anything that you've defined in here will be imported into the hydraulic design toolbox. Now you'll notice that we have actually defined our piers and our abutments both in the bridge and in the train. And so here they are, they're stamped into the train and we get a lot of feedback that that seems like we're double counting them. We are not double counting them. And I have a whole nother video coming out about how these bridge models work and why it's appropriate to put piers and abutments both in your terrain and in your bridge editor in the geometry, but that's best practice. And so that's what we've done here. And so back to our new tool, there's actually nothing you have to do in this interface. This interface is just showing you what the model is going to export to the Federal Highway Bridge Scour tool. 
So bridge scour is comprised of you know, regional scour, which we don't do in this tool, then contraction scour, peer scour, and abutment scour. And so we are doing the first two in this beta, and then in the final release, we'll add abutment scour and pressure scour. Um, but if you go to contraction, you need to define six cross sections to do a contraction scour analysis. And so the contraction cross sections are the one right, right through the bridge. And so you can choose this select tool. We've named this reference line here, which is kind of harvesting the results you're going to require for this analysis as the contraction leftover bank reference line. So we'll just select that and it automatically populates the results you need for this analysis. All right, and so now we can go to the channel and we can select that and we can go to the right over bank in the contraction and select that. Um, you can also just go here and select from the drop down. So for the approach left over bank, I can go approach left over bank and then I can say approach channel. And then just to kind of show you where these are, I'll use the, that's gonna be this cross section up here um, and I'll select that. Now we have another video on how to actually decide where these cross sections are, but basically you want the approach cross section outside of the contraction zone where the water is kind of fully expanded. Um, and then the contraction cross section is within the contraction itself. That's essentially what you might think of as the bridge cross section. But then we have this other cross section, which we're calling the peer approach cross section. Uh, this is supposed to be set about one peer length upstream of the bridge. And that's the cross section we use for peer scour. So the next thing that we do in the tool is we go to the peer evaluation. And again, we need three cross sections. We need the approach channel cross section, and we're gonna use the max values here uh, because we assume that the Thalweg and the max values during a bridge scour event can migrate. And then you can also choose the overbanks for overbank peers, like these peers, but the default in the beta version is actually we're gonna use the channel values for all of them because you have to make an explicit decision about whether you think the channel can migrate during a bridge scour event. And so right now we're kind of forcing that decision. If you want to have the overbank values, you say, no, I don't believe that the channel is gonna migrate into my floodplain peers. Uh, you can put those in manually. In the final version, we're gonna allow you to choose these by peer. All right, and then that's it. Uh, we've populated the data you need. You go to the export tab, you've got this export all button and you'll get to give it a name. So let's call it bridge scour video. All right, and so that's all you do in RAS. Uh, everything else is gonna happen in the Federal Highway Administration toolbox. And so let's open the toolbox. If you go to our documentation, there's a whole section on you know, where to get this toolbox and some documentation about it. But the idea is, is that you know, these equations are developed and maintained by the Federal Highway Administration. And they update the equations from time to time. And so we're just gonna actually use their toolbox to do the actual calculation uh, because if they, as they update the guidance, they'll update their toolbox, but the export from RAS will stay the same. And so all we're gonna do now is we're gonna go find that file we exported. And so if we go to Bridge Scour Video, it's what's called a HYD file. That's the hydraulic toolbox format. So we open that and you'll see that it automatically populates a Bridge Scour analysis. So let's go to that Bridge Scour analysis. And so if you go to the plot preview, you'll see it brought in the deck, it brought in the peers, it brought in the cross section, it brought in pretty much the, the things that we're interested in. There's a couple of things that we have to do manually though. And the first one is, what are the left and bank stations? Because it's going to split up the contraction scour by those left and right bank stations. And if we go back to our bridge plot, if this was a 1D cross section in RAS, you know, where would you put the bank stations? Well, you know, I'd probably put the bank stations there and there. That's where my little red dots would be. In Bridge Scour, we're not in, as interested in the hydraulic channel as we are in the transporting channel. So we're often thinking about the toe of bank. And so our bank stations would be like 137 to you know 186. Um, so we'll go in and, and populate those. Our bank stations are 137 and 186. And what you'll see is that basically the way the tool works is that you have your contraction scour, and then you have your geometry, and then you have your peers, and you can see it's imported information for each of our peers, uh, and then you have your abutment scour. And so 
we'll have to actually go into each one of these and add the manual information that they require. And so we'll go in to our contraction scour and it asks really the only thing it needs here is what's the D50, the median particle size that's being transported because it needs to decide if it's going to do a live bed or a clear water scour. And so for now, let's just say 0.5. Uh, half a millimeter and it will populate everything you need both for live bed and clear water scour it will tell you which one it's doing um, and then it will tell you the scour depth that it computed in this case it's you know 1.7 feet um, but it also shows you the live bed scour in case you want to override that decision and so we'll go in and do the same thing for the overbanks you know uh, for now we'll just use the same d50 and we're good. And then we'll go down to the peers and we will look at the peer scour information. Now, this peer scour will automatically compute because you have everything you need here, but you haven't actually made all the decisions that you need to make. You actually have to make an explicit decision about what's the peer shape. And uh, if I show you these peer shapes, is that a square nose peer? No, so you're getting the wrong answer. Um, so you have to come in here and you have to say, no, that's a sharp nose pier. Uh, we are computing clear water scour, and so we're going to keep that. And then if we go and look at our scour plot. You'll notice that we're actually getting a lot more scour in these floodplain piers than we are in the channel piers, and that's because we are using the channel hydraulics um, instead of the floodplain hy hydraulics over there. And I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to say, you know, from a geomorphic assessment of a fake data set, that there's, I don't believe that the channel is going to migrate over into these piers. And so I actually want to go back to my scour tool and I'm going to find the overbank values for that max velocity and max depth. And so if I do associate those new hydraulics with my piers and we go into the pier scour parameters, you'll see that you know we're getting a scour depth of about three feet. But if we go look at our plot, these overbank pier scours, we're getting a lot more than three feet. And that's because we're getting three feet below the Thalweg. You know, we're still assuming that the channel can move over there because the default is the Thalweg rather than the local method. And you can actually select this. When you go to your peer evaluation, you can make a, a selection here, whether you want these to be Thalweg or local, but you can also make that choice here. And you could say, okay, pier three and four, I want to be Thalweg scour. That's gonna, the channel elevation is the default below which we're gonna compute scour. But for these overbank piers, again, because we've made this geomorphic assessment, we're gonna say that those are local scour. And so now, if we plot the result, you'll see that we don't have any contraction scour up here in our floodplains, but we are getting you know, a couple of feet of contraction scour through the bridge, and then we are getting pure scour in both our channel and our floodplain. And so that's a really brief overview, kind of a teaser trailer of the features that are coming out where RAS will be able to interact with the hydraulic design toolbox from the Federal Highway Administration and you'll be able to use RAS results pretty seamlessly to do a bridge scour analysis. We have a bunch more videos coming out. We've got full documentation that is continuing to evolve, but we wanted to get a little preview of the tools that are coming out there so some you know, subject matter experts, people who are used to this, these kind of analyses, can get in there, start using it, and give us some feedback before the final release. I'm Stanford Gibson, the Sediment Transport Specialist on the HC RAS team, and these videos have been funded by the HHC SET program.